you're watching this video, you probably have bought or you're about to buy a NAS and you're wondering what sort of hard drives you should put inside. So I'm going to show you all kind of hard drives that are available and which ones are the ones that you should be using in your preferred setup. What you need if you're just starting out with a simple NAS solution and what you need if you become something more serious with a business based NAS. So there is something in common with all of the NASs and they all come with a SATA based connection inside. So when I say SATA it means connection like this and you'll find this connection on all of the hard drives. Sometimes you might find SAS based drives, they are very similar connection but most of the modern NASs do not come with a SAS connection unless you build your own NAS or you're going for some sort of rack mount solution which has dedicated SAS connection. But otherwise, with a normal desktop based NAS, you're not gonna have problem with this connection. So the only thing you need to pay attention with is the hard drives. Do they come with a SATA port? People often start with something basic like USB to SATA connectors, which allows them to connect the hard drive to a laptop or a computer. This way, they don't need to think about what sort of hard drive they are using because all of them will work. And if it's a single drive, people will often get uh, USB type drives. But sometimes one drive is enough and people want to build something more serious with more storage or more redundancy. So people can use different kind of methods to connect these drives to the PC. You can connect all those different kind of drives through USB or direct SATA connection on your computer. If you want to access these drives remotely or the internet, you'll be running some sort of NAS software. And people often choose Unraid, which allows you to mix all kinds of drives together and have this storage space available to you, which you can access remotely or from your home. Things slightly change when you introduce a RAID, but not just yet. If you get a two-base solution, you still don't need to worry too much about what drives you're going to be putting in there. As long as they are SATA drives, they will work. With a two bay, things are very simple. You still can stick with any drive you want as long as it's SATA drive. You will have several options. You can either set these drives to be individually accessible, one and another, or you can set them in JBOT, which means you merge those two drives together. So suddenly you have capacity of two drives, but it's gonna be seen as a single drive. So first of all, you will fill up the first drive and then the second one, but it's all gonna be seen as one volume. That's JBOT. Otherwise, if you set up RAID 1, that means you are copying one drive to another drive, so mirror. So whatever is written to one drive, it's also been copied to another drive. So it doesn't matter what sort of drives you are using, as long as you use the same capacity drives. And then there is RAID 0, which also glues these drives together. With RAID 0, data is written to both drives simultaneously. So thanks to RAID 0, you can read and write from two drives at the same time, which means you are increasing the performance, the speed, you can write or read the data. There's one thing you need to know about branded NASs though. If you get the Synology NAS, which is released after 2025, you can only use Synology drives. Synology will say they support uh, their certified drives from their compatibility lists, but their compatibility list only lists Synology drives. So. You'll need to get those Synology drives in order to use these boxes. But that's the only brand that does that, so let's put this aside and continue with the video. So if you get a NAS from the company that do care about customer, like UNAS Pro from Unify, you have more options there. As long as it's SATA-based hard drive and it fits into the bay, you will be able to use this drive. Either it's from WD, Seagate or Toshiba or another brand, you can use them in a NAS. There is only one disclaimer. Some of the new big capacity drives are slightly thicker. So when you try to put them into a UNAS, it might not fit in the bay. But this applies only to UNAS and only for this particular drive, which is too thick to fit in a bay. Normally, this is not the case. So here's one tip. If you're using a NAS with three or more bays and you will be setting up RAID 5, make sure you're using CMR type of drives. You can find WD RED SMR uh, NAS drives, which are not made for RAID 5 setups. It's for RAID 1 or any other one or two bay solutions. If you're not sure if your drives are SMR or CMR, you can go to NAS Compares and there's a list that we made 
listing all CMR and SMR drives. So you can make sure that the drive you buy is CMR and it will work perfectly fine in RAID 5, RAID 6 or any other bigger RAID like this. So this is the drive you need to be careful with. This is WD RAID. You need to have WD RAID Plus or RAID Pro. That is CMR type of drive. But this one is SMR. So I use this only for one bay or two bay solutions. If you don't want to do much research, WD make few models that are for sure CMR drives and those are WD Red Plus, Red Pro and WD Gold drives and WD Ultra Star drives. There are also WD Purple drives that you can use in a NAS environment. They are made for surveillance solutions but they also can be used for NAS. And then if you prefer Seagate drives, you can get Iron Wolf drives or Iron Wolf Pro or Exos drives or Seagate Skyhawk drives. They're all CMR based drives. Then Toshiba also make uh, NAS drives that Snorgy normally use to relabel and name those drives as theirs. Those are N300 series, MN series and M6 series. So just to sum up what colors you need to use, Go for WD Red drives if you have one or two base solution. Same with Iron Wolf normal drives or Toshiba N300 drives. You can use these drives up to eight bay boxes. If you have eight bays and more, you probably will prefer to have Pro drives. So that will be WD Red Pro, Gold drives, Ultrastar drives, Seagate Iron Wolf Pro or Exos drives, or Toshiba MN and M6 series drives. If you did buy Snorgy and it's from 25 series and up, you will be locked in their ecosystems. So you'll need to choose Snorgy Plus series for up to eight bays and then go for the pro hard drives for eight bays and above. And then the next question that usually people ask is, do you need to fill all of the bays? And the answer is no, you can just start with one drive, then you can add another one and another one with a Synology, you can mix different size drives. Their SHR will allow you to combine those capacities together. So you still have redundancy and space is growing when you're adding more drives. But hard drives are quite slow. And in order to speed them up, people add something called caching. And that's your either NVMe SSDs or your SATA type SSDs. Having this NVMe cache will boost the hard drive performance. Hard drives normally perform around 200, 250 megabytes a second per drive. But if you combine them in the RAID, the speeds multiply. So you could potentially get 1000 megabytes a second, which is 10 gigabit speed by combining all these drives in RAID 10 setup or maybe RAID 6 setup or RAID 5. But you will need to have at least eight bays to achieve performance like this. But this is why people normally introduce caching. So you can use one of, or two of the bays for SAT SSDs to run caching. But sometimes your NAS may come with a caching slot at the bottom or inside the NAS. So do check that out because it's a very beneficial feature to have. You can simply slot this cache SSD inside by adding a pair of NVMEs or SAT SSDs, all your data is going to be first written to SSDs or if the data is accessed frequently it will be stored on your NVMEs so the speed will be much much faster so the system doesn't need to look for data on these slow hard drives it's already on this very fast NVMe storage but sometimes caching is not enough so you need a reliable and predictable speed from your SSDs so people choose to have either all bays filled with SSDs or they sometimes fill few bays of the SSDs. It could be two bays or it could be half of the base filled with SSDs and other half with hard drives. So you can have two separate volumes, one really fast and one is slower for your archiving and data that doesn't need to be accessed that frequently. If you do use those SSDs for caching, make sure their DWPD score is at least 0.7 or preferably 1. That means how many times you can read and write data from these SSDs before they break down and wear out. If you use SSDs for storage, then all you need to really care about is do they have SATA slot. But it's also recommended to go for NAS series SSDs and that will be 
that would be Seagate Fire CUDA drives or Iron Wolf drives or WD RAID SSD drives. But sometimes having SSDs in the NAS is also not enough. So people choose to fill it up with NVMEs, but not in hard drive base this time. That's going to be either in your caching slots that I showed you earlier, either at the bottom of the NAS or inside of the NAS. Or sometimes you can get NVMe only NAS solution like the one from Asus Store or other brands as well. These NASs come with 6 or even 12 NVMe bays inside. So you, there's no mechanical drives, no SAT SSDs, no SAT hard drives, just NVMe storage. Those NASs will often come with 10 gigabit port or 25 gigabit port or PCIe slot, which allows you to have multiple very fast LAN connections. And when speaking about LAN ports, before you choose hard drives for really fast performance, make sure there's no bottlenecks on your NAS, because quite often you'll have NVMe NAS with a 1 or 2.5 gig LAN port, which means these NVMe's can sometimes work 8,000 megabytes or Gen 5 can do 15,000 megabytes a second, while you're still bottlenecked with 100 megabytes a second LAN port, or you could be limited to 10 gigabit, 1000 megabyte connection at the back of your NAS. So before you go crazy and fill it up with SSDs, make sure that the long connections can actually sustain this speed. Before I go, there are a few tips also I wanna mention. So when you see four terabyte on the hard drive, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're actually gonna have four terabytes of space on this drive. It's always gonna be less than advertised, simply because of translation from bits to bytes and so on. You can go to NAS Compare's website and check out what actual storage space you get on each drive. There's also a calculator which allows you to do some predictions, how many hard drives you need to gain a storage space that you require. There's also a tool, price per terabyte, which will allow you to find cheapest hard drives to gain the speed that you need. Sometimes it is cheaper to get three drives and get the certain capacity rather than having five drives. So do check out that tool, which will allow you to save some money when building your RAID. The other thing that needs to be said is about the noise. Bigger capacity drives will often be much, much louder compared to smaller capacity drives, simply because there are fewer disks inside that are spinning, fewer heads that are moving around. Biggest capacity drives usually come with helium inside before they figure out how to do this with air inside, but they're always going to be louder. We also have a page on NAS Compares where we have recordings for different capacity drives so you can actually find out if that noise is acceptable to you or not. So it all comes down to speed at the end of the day. If you're having a basic backup solution, basic file server, you'll be okay with a NAS that can deliver 200 megabytes a second or less. That allows you to stream movies, have your own Dropbox alternative, your SMB share, or simple time machine backups. Then in office, you might need something around 500 megabyte a second. So that would be your five gigabit connection or even 10 gigabit connection. But the drives inside would be able to deliver this speed. So that would allow you to do some basic video editing, very fast backups, and have a lot of people accessing the same data at the same time without having a speed bottleneck. So that could be achieved with several hard drives and maybe NVMe caching. But if you need something more serious like 4K editing, very fast backups for multiple computers, you might need to have some 10 gigabit solution. That would be all SSD based NAS or shared SSD and hard drive volumes inside your NAS. And if you have multiple 4K editors and maybe you're running your own virtual machines and AI or things like that, you may need to get a NAS with flash only. So all NVMEs set up in RAID and that will give you speeds about 10 or even 25 gigabit per second. So I hope this clarifies the question, what drives should I use for my NAS? Should I use SSDs, HDDs, NVMEs? What are the brands? What are the models available out in the market? Which ones are more reliable? Which ones are made for different raids? So I hope this video was simplifying your choice of the media that you're gonna put inside your NAS. If there's any question I didn't cover in this video, do leave a comment. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.